Hi guys, today we are looking at some of the beliefs that we have in mass. But to start us off, I wonder, can you remember any of those seven I am statements we looked at last lesson? So what does Jesus say? He is, I am the bread, I am, I wonder, can you jot down as many as you can remember, either at home or in school? Okay. Today, we're going to be looking at something really important to Catholics, something that you will definitely have said in Mass, but you might not know that well, and that is the Nicene Creed, the Nicene Creed. So, the Nicene Creed is a long, long, long prayer that we say in Mass. Not every Mass, but it's always said at Sunday Mass. So at our school Masses, they're not on a Sunday. So we've said this sometimes, but not every Mass. But if you go to church on a Sunday, you will always say the creed. It's a really, really important part. And that's because the creed isn't just any old prayer, any old words. The creed is exactly what we believe that makes us Catholics. So this is what we believe that makes us different from Jewish people, from Muslims, from Sikhs, from any other religion. This is what makes us Catholics, the things that we specifically believe. We proclaim it every Sunday at Mass and it's our statement of belief. Today, we're going to read through it, we're going to learn about what it means and we're going to learn some new vocabulary from this creed as well. So I've put the creed up here on the screen. I'm going to read through it now and as I read through, I wonder, can you remember having said this in Mass? I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we've got some tricky words here that I've just read in our creed and I wonder can we match them up to the right meaning? So we've got these tricky words on the left and our meanings on the right. Pause the screen and give it your best guess. We're going to look at the answers together in three, two, and one. So starting off with the word incarnate. Incarnate means given flesh. Jesus was made into a person, a fleshy person like you or me. The incarnation is the moment where God makes the baby Jesus inside of the Virgin Mary's womb. So it's the moment that Jesus stops being part of God and the Holy Spirit and starts being a human or oh, a very special human, but a fleshy person, a human person nonetheless. Next, we've got the word proceeds, and you'll have heard this word quite a lot. Proceeds means to come from somewhere. So if I proceed from my classroom, I am coming from my classroom. Jesus proceeds from the Father and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. So the Holy Spirit comes from God and Jesus. Just like Jesus comes from God and the Holy Spirit. It's about being all part of the same thing, but being individuals as well. We've looked at that before when we've looked at the Trinity. Next, we have the word ascended. And I hope you know what this means after all our practice. To ascend means to go up. Jesus went up. He rose from earth up to heaven 40 days after Easter, which is coming up soon for us. And he joined his father in heaven at his right hand side. So when we're talking about Jesus ascending, we're talking about Jesus leaving earth and going up to heaven. Next, we have accordance in accordance. An accordance means an agreement. If you are in accordance with somebody, you agree with them. 
So, for example, I am in accordance with Mrs. Anderson about how great chocolate cake is. Jesus, in his passion, fulfilled everything that the Bible said he was going to do, that the Messiah was going to do. So his life agrees with the Bible, agrees with the scripture. So Jesus is in accordance with the scriptures. Next, we have this very long, very fancy word, and that's consubstantial. Consubstantial means being part of the same thing. So the first bit, con, means with. Substantial means substance, the thing that something is made of. If you are consubstantial, you are part of the same thing, part of the same substance. The Trinity, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are so close that they are part of the same whole. Next, we have the word begotten, the only begotten Son. Jesus is God's son as part of a plan that he's had. He wasn't just created like you or I were by his parents. He was begotten. We knew that Jesus was going to come a long time before he was ever born. Begotten means he's very, very special. He wasn't just created, he was planned for. Next, we have visible and invisible. This should have been an easy one. Visible means things that you can see and invisible means things that you can't see. We believe that God made everything, including the things that we can see, like people and places and grass and trees and things that we can't always see. For example, our family that lives far away or love or air. All of those things we know exist, but we can't see them. So he made everything visible and invisible. He made all of it. Now let's look at the creed and break it down. So this is the very, very beginning, the very first statement of belief. I believe in one God. So this is what makes us different from the ancient Egyptians or the Anglo-Saxons, for example. We don't believe in lots of gods. We just believe in one. There is one God who is in charge of everything. He is the Father Almighty, the all-powerful Father. He is the maker of heaven and earth, and he makes all things that are visible and all things that are invisible. All this means is we know that God made everything, we believe he made everything we can see and everything we can't see. The next part of the creed is about Jesus. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ. This is what makes Catholics different, for example, from Jews, because Jews believe in God who made everything, but they don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. If you are Christian or Catholic, you believe that Jesus is the Son of God that Jesus was a special person who wasn't just born, he was begotten, he was planned for, he was foretold. We believe in Jesus, the only begotten son of God. We believe that he was planned before anything else even happened, born of the father before all ages. And then we've got God from God, light from light, true God from true God. That means that we believe Jesus is part of God. He is God from God. He is light from light, that light is God. True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. And remember, consubstantial meant part of, so he's part of the Trinity. Through him, all things were made. And for us men, so for us people, and for our salvation to save us, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was made incarnate of the Virgin Mary. So he was given to Mary in her womb and he became man. He was born and he was grown up as a person just like us. Next we have, and this is still about Jesus, for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. So this is what's going to happen very, very soon at the end of Lent on Good Friday. We believe that Jesus was crucified on the cross, that Pontius Pilate made that decision. He suffered death, he was buried, but on the third day he rose again. And we knew he was going to rise again because the scriptures, the prophets, had talked about it. So in agreement with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, he went up to heaven, and he is now seated next to God. And at the end of the world, we believe he will come again with God to judge the living and the dead, to say whether we've been good or we've been bad, and his kingdom will have no end. Heaven will never end, heaven will go on forever. Then we have the third part of the Trinity. So we've talked about God, we've talked about Jesus, and now it's time to talk about the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who comes from God and Jesus, proceeds from the Father and the Son. And just like God and Jesus, we worship the Holy Spirit and we glorify the Holy Spirit. We pray to it, we bless it. 
We ask for blessings from it, even sorry. We believe that the Holy Spirit spoke through the prophets to tell us about the coming of Jesus, to tell us about what we should be doing. And we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. So we have a church, not a synagogue or a mosque. We believe that it is one church. So we are part of the worldwide church. And we've talked about that just before half term. We're part of the Catholic church and we are part of the apostolic church the apostles there the apostles of jesus we confess one baptism so we believe baptism is important we've talked about baptism when we wear the white gowns and we have the water poured over our heads and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come this bit means we look forward to going to heaven after we've died because we know that we'll continue to live with god and jesus and then we end our prayer with Amen, which is a sign of agreement. Mary said Amen when the angel Gabriel asked her to carry God's child to baby Jesus. It means let it be done or I agree. So Amen is that sign that we agree with everything we've just said, that statement of belief. Your job today is to answer a few of the questions on Teams about the Nicene Creed. You're going to look at it bit by bit, just like we've done. Okay. If you get stuck, come back to this video to look at those bits of the creed and to hear me talk about them again. If you're still stuck, post a message in the Ask the Teachers channel and I'll come and give you a hand. Take care with your work, make sure you've got your capitals and your full stops. Make sure you've listened to this video carefully and if there's anything you've missed or forgotten, come back and hear it again. We'll see you soon. Bye.